All right, what's up everyone? Alex here with The Whiskey Shelf, and today I wanted to do a companion review of Blanton's Takara Red Single Barrel Bourbon. So when I say a companion review, I mean a kind of like an additional review on top of the one that I've already written for my blog, the www.thewhiskeyshelf.com. So if you want to watch it on YouTube or read it on the blog, you have both options. But anyways, let's get to this bourbon. So you know Blanton's, um, but you may have heard of this Blanton's Red or you often call Blanton's Takada Red, which is a Japan-only release of Blanton's, which, if you look at it, it looks, it looks pretty similar to what you find in the U.S., in a very similar color label. Now, but there's a couple of main differences here. One, they actually, this is actually going to be harder to tell, the font of the ink, or the color of the ink in on these labels is actually has like a red hue, whereas the regular 46.5% ABV Blanton's has a black, you know, black color. Second, these come in a red box that you don't get in America. So that's also a nice touch. And not only that, get into this last, this box, if we can get into the camera, has like a slightly golden like uh, coin type thing uh, with a horse on it. Let's see if we can get that there. And I think this actually probably reflects the fact that in Japanese, Takada means treasure. So in a lot of ways, you could probably call this Blanton's Takada Treasure Red Single Barrel Bourbon. And the one last thing I want to add uh, before I get into the actual review itself, you know, Blanz has always been very popular you know, across the world. Blanz actually came to Japan first, I think in 85, 86 time period, and only then came back to the U.S. at a later date. So actually, you can find some of these you know, pre-2000s, like pre-95 in Japan, which is actually pretty cool. Uh, last thing I want to mention these so ancient age actually owns the Mashville and this brand and so that's part of the reason that you'll find a lot of more of these and other releases outside of the US you know, especially in Japan because it is a Japanese company so you have you know, this one prior prior and before you know gold Blanton's gold and straight from the barrel were Japanese only and then or actually I think they were European but they were not in the US but that has changed more recently but still, you know, this red, which is eight years old versus the six years in the U.S., as well as the black are still Japanese-only releases. But, you know, enough about that. Um, let's get into actually smelling and drinking this whiskey, and I'll let you know what I think. So I'm going to actually put this stuff over here because I don't want to knock it down because I actually almost did. Um, take a look at the glass. Pretty, you know, dark color. I think the blue curtains behind me are adding to that darkness, but it has a decent, decent hue to it, so I'm not bad, not mad. Here we go, cheers. So the thing with this is that, you know, because it is a little bit older, and I'm gonna do some comparisons with regular blends from my own memory, you know, this already comes out of the gate with caramel, this dried oak, dried ginseng, and a lot of fennel and licorice you know, really that come from that higher rye uh, mash village. I think, you know, it's in the 12 to 15 percentage range. You know, Buffalo Trace has never mentioned it, so we can't actually confirm. But it is a very fragrant so far. It really has that high rye quality. So as you get through the honey, the dry oak, the ginseng, the fennel, the licorice, you get some more of the drub. That's how you call it. The dried citrus peel, you know, the vanilla, the cinnamon. And there's actually a little bit of like alcohol kick to it, you know, that definitely is stronger than that 46.5% would indicate. But you know, overall, it does smell really nice. I think, you know, and I, I'll write this, in, I have said this in the review as well. Like the biggest knock on this is that not that it smells bad, it just, it always feels a little thin. You know, I personally like, you know, higher ABV things. You know, it doesn't have to be 55, 60%, but you know, in the high 40s into low 50s is kind of like where I like to see a lot of these bourbons. And you know, with this one, you know, as much as I like all those scents, it's definitely toned down a little more than I would like because of that ABV. But even already, you give it another smell, I can already get more of that oak influence that I haven't gotten in the American release blends that are around six years old. And so the extra two years of age is already giving me more of the oak influence. I am getting more, a little bit more, you know, a little more honey, a little more of that sweetness, a little more oak, 
as well a little bit more of that herbal quality from that extra age also and a little bit more of that spice as well I'll just give it one more smell for old time's sake yeah and so Blanton's Red just smells it smells very good I think there's just like a ceiling to this particular one because of that ABV so let's get into the taste Yeah, Blanton's Red, honestly, it tastes very good. The thing that always comes to mind when I drink this is John J. Bowman's Single Barrel Bourbon, which I think you can only find in the U.S. I haven't seen it in Japan yet. But I say that because just like John J. Bowman's Single Barrel, which is 100 proof, 8 to 10 years, Single Barrel, and it really comes out with very herbal honey because of that higher rye character. So honey, fennel, licorice. Maybe it's another sip. Yeah, so after you get like the honey and then the herbal fennel licorice and a little bit of rosemary, then you get this like bigger wave of roasted oak and dried ginseng that I really don't find in the other blends, at least the six-year-old ones. And I think the two extra years of aging are bringing that you know, to the flavors. But after that, you, know, you get a lot more citrus, vanilla, and then more of the cinnamon, clove, and nutmeg that you really get in a lot of bourbons. And overall, I really do like how this tastes. I just again think overall the really the the ABV for better or worse puts a ceiling on how good this really can be. Um, but again, I I am really enjoying drinking this. We look at this bottle; it's pretty much done because you know I've been sharing this with friends, and it does taste good. We get another sip to give some more notes if I can get them. I also do recognize you might be able to hear the swishing with this mic I have right here. So I hope you aren't too turned off by it. But flavor-wise, again, it's a really nicely balanced bourbon. You know, the, really the honey, the vanilla, the orange, you know, kind of sweetness. And then you have this like mixed in fennel and licorice that really comes from the rye, I find. And then there's also this nicely really balanced and slightly stronger roasted oak and dried ginseng from the age. And then you have the wood spices as well. And so really it covers the whole spectrum of flavors. I just think, I wish this was a higher proof. And I think, you know, doing that would take it so much further. And so really to wrap this shorter review up, you know, I've given Blanton's Takara Red, or Takara Red if you want to be more, pronounce it more appropriately in Japanese. I'm going to put this, show this bottle again. I did neglect to mention this is bottled uh, 7-20-2020. Uh, from barrel number 98, uh, warehouse H, rig 56, and of course 93 proof. So back to the rating. I'm going to give this a mid-shelf plus 79 points. Uh, the rating scale will be in the description below since I don't really feel like doing video editing and sticking it to the sides. Um, so if you want to know more, that'll be below. Quick thing, because this is my first review of video, 79 points sounds bad, but it's not. You know, top shelf starts at 80. And when I think of Top Shelf, I'm already thinking of like great, amazing bourbons. You know, some great examples. Wild Tricky Rare Breed, I'm a big fan. You know, Stag Junior. Um, you know, those who really come to mind as like really, really great bourbons. And so even those are really only in the you know, mid 80s, sometimes it's high, like you know, 82 to 85. So a 79 is not nearly as bad as it sounds. It's just how my scale is set up. But you know, back to the rating. So I really like the fact that it has this really wide spectrum of flavors, sweet, fruit, herbal, oak, with a little bit of extra oak in that spice. It really brings a you know, really complete experience. It's just the this lower ABV that I would like kind of puts a damper or a ceiling on how great it could be. And you know, as a result, I've given it a 79, which is a mid-shelf plus. It really teetering on the edge of top shelf, which starts at 80. But, you know, honestly, you know, that's why there's Blanton's Gold and Blanton's Straight from the Barrel that can provide that higher proof experience. But I do think those are six years old, not eight years old. So I really think an eight-year-old version or a Straight from the Barrel or Gold version of this eight-year-old Blanton's would be probably amazing. Um, but, you know, who really knows what, what, you know, what Buffalo Trace would do with this, what Ancient Angel will 
do, but you know, that's on my wish list, of course. Otherwise, I guess you can get uh, Abraham Bowman cash strength, but we don't get this in Japan, which makes it more difficult. And so really to the last piece I wanted to talk about here is the value. Value is really challenging to talk about just because it's subjective and like what, what people are willing to pay, what people think are good. I think in my view, I paid 80, about $80 after the exchange rate from Amazon, which I think is a pretty good price, pretty competitive price. I've actually seen it probably close to 70, 70 to 75 out in some physical stores. Um, so even in that ballpark, I wouldn't say that Blanton's Red is necessarily a great value. I've definitely enjoyed drinking it, um, and I've enjoyed it a lot, and I've shared it with friends. At the same time, I don't necessarily feel so compelled to buy it again. I probably will, just because it's not that hard to find. If I want one, I can just go get one, and I know I'll like it. But kind of, kind of hate to comment on the secondary market or even just like resale. I don't know if this is really a whatever triple digit good level of bourbon. Again, do whatever you want with your money. That's definitely your prerogative. And if you want to pay for it, of course, do what you want. I bought a bunch of whiskey that's probably overpaid for it a little bit, but it's okay. I think the point I'm making is that I think for most people, you know, this is an upgraded experience from the you know, normal 46.5% ABV blend you can get in America, but it's not necessarily so much better that you know I would really say you should definitely go out and try to find this. You know, it's definitely worth 200 or 300 dollars. It's really not. Then again, you know, spend the money the way you want. I think I'm happy with this one, uh, and I definitely think if you are in Japan and you can pay. 70 80 bucks sure go for it i wouldn't necessarily pay more than 100 and i've seen it in some stores at 100 but at the end of the day, it's your life do what you want and with that said you know i'm going to finish this uh but before i forget don't forget if you like what you see subscribe below hit that bell you know because youtube makes you do that uh, i have links to my blog the review, link to the review will be below you know link to instagram uh, as well for you know, all sorts of whiskey reviews comparisons what i'm doing in japan uh, you know what i'm finding in japan and then last but not least if you like what you're seeing you know, definitely think about supporting me on patreon the link is below um you know just really help me continue to explore and to buy things um, and really just like continue to create more content for you which i hope you'll find useful so with that said really appreciate your time i somehow did this in one take which i think is awesome um you know, not perfect but because stylistically that's something that I want to do. And again, thank you so much for your time. I hope you'll keep watching. I hope you'll check out my other videos. And I hope to see you again on another Whiskey Review Companion. And the last thing, don't forget to check out the blog as well, www.thewhiskeyshelf.com. You know, there you'll find like the really the fully written out review that just covers everything. And I think you'll probably find it useful. And then I've got tons and tons of reviews on there as well. I think it's like over 100 60 primarily bourbon and rye reviews so if you don't see the review on my youtube channel it's probably actually it's, it's exceedingly likely that it is on the website here i'm just trying to like work through reviews that of bottles i have you know in this shelf over here that you can't see um so the website will be the best place to still find reviews of everything again kind of rambled on a bit but Really appreciate your time. Really appreciate support and see you. Have a great one, everyone. Bye.